I understand when people say to me that they want to bring Revelation 7 to earth now. I get that. I feel that. But I also recognize that it is not possible for all churches to look like that now, given their demographics. So I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. And Louisville, Kentucky, we have a fairly diverse city. I mean, it's not Chicago or New York, but we have a large international community. We have a, have a, a large refugee community. We have a, a, a good-sized African-American um, population, Anglo population. Uh, different, different ethnic groups are there. So it's possible for churches in a context like that if the congregation is willing and intentional about it to be multi-ethnic. But there are other places in, in Kentucky where it's impossible. There, there are no, there's no ethnic diversity. So I would want to say two things related to this. One, even if there is not ethnic diversity, there is going to be some kind of otherness in communities in different uh, contexts. So maybe there will be some poor people in the community alongside of some middle class people. Maybe, maybe they'll be all white or all or black or whatever. The, the social divide is often much more challenging than the racial divide. I mean, I, I found in my own ministry that middle class blacks and poor whites sometimes have a hard time being reconciled in certain, certain contexts. So then those congregations that don't have multi-ethnic uh, opportunities can still pursue reconciliation with the other regardless of who that other might be in their communities. Now, for those churches that can be multi-ethnic, I think it would be disobedient to the gospel for those churches not to intentionally pursue multi-ethnicity if their congregations are in multi-ethnic communities. Honestly, I do not understand how mono-ethnic churches can exist in multi-ethnic communities. I don't know how, how people can be comfortable with that. So... One thing congregations need to do is, is intentionally put themselves, if it's a mono-ethnic church in a multi-ethnic context, put themselves in the posture of the learner and pursue those people who don't share the ethnic posture. And so what's that going to look like then in the context of the church? It, it doesn't mean we simply want to get people together. Again, as I said earlier, you don't need Jesus to do that. But gospel-centered racial reconciliation means you have some from every tongue, tribe, people, and nation coming together and they are sacrificing privileges and power for the sake of building each other up in Jesus. So, so one thing that that means is, is churches need to intentionally seek to, to spread leadership amongst those who are qualified but from different ethnic postures. So you don't want to appoint somebody in, in leadership just because he's black or, or diverse or whatever. You want qualified people. But churches should intentionally be thinking, do we have qualified white brothers and sisters, black brothers and sisters, Latino brothers and sisters, Asian brothers and sisters who can step into leadership so that they can be visually seen in the congregation so that when people enter into the body, they see that we reflect the community. Another way this looks like is, is that we love one another. We spend time with each other. One of the things about the Christian faith that uh, is so powerful is the Christian community is a community. We are a family. First century Christians spent time with each other. So this looks like you and I hanging out over, I don't drink coffee, over a ball game, watching Texas football or something. You and I spending time together, learning from each other, praying for each other, building each other up. It's not simply sitting in a pew together. It's doing that and doing life with each other. Life on life. And life on life is not just going to a church service together with different people. It's, that's part of it. But life on life is also living with each other, bearing burdens with each other, and sharing privileges and preferences. And using the privileges that we have for the sake of building each other up, uh, those who might not share those privileges. And then, again, this can manifest itself in different ways in different contexts. But I think those are a few things that we can do in the context of the church. 